Now we're going to look at hyperbolas. And again, we're going to describe these using a set of points. And the definition here for the hyperbola is the set of all points x, y in a plane for which the absolute value of the difference of the distances from two distinct fixed points called the foci is constant. And that's what we can see down here. Here we have our hyperbola. And this is an example where the hyperbola has a horizontal axis. And we can see that here are, we have our focus. So this is one of our foci here and one over here. There we have our distinct fixed points. And if we go from one out to the point on the graph and then to the other, this is going to be a set difference. So down here, that difference is going to be constant. D2 minus D1, if we take the absolute value, that's going to remain a constant difference. Now, as we go through describing this, we're going to realize that we're going to have very similar uh, similarities with uh, the hyperbola as we did with the ellipse. So if we start out looking, over here we have our foci. Okay, so here our, the red dot is our foci. Here in the middle we have the center, and I mentioned the foci. And then here in blue we have our vertices. Okay. And we want to look at this as, in this example, we actually have what's called a horizontal axis, or this is called the transverse axis, and that's going to go here horizontally through uh, to the focus, through the vertex, the center. Uh, so that tells us we're going to have what's called a horizontal transverse axis. So if we look down here, we can notice we have the uh, equation for the hyperbola and it's going to look very similar to the ellipse except for one major difference is we notice that we have here it's being subtracted instead of added and we have x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1 how do we determine that this is horizontal well we know it's horizontal because up at the top here we have x minus h squared. Uh, so if that is first, it's going to be horizontal. If we look at the next equation, it's y minus k squared. If the y minus k is first, then it's going to be vertical. So you're going to notice we have still kind of the same a values and b values that we had with the ellipse. It's just that now we're subtracting instead of adding. And also the other difference I mentioned before is if we're looking at calculating that C value, notice the equation here is different in that it is A squared plus B squared. Remember for the ellipse, it was A squared minus B squared. So you need to be careful. So with this one in the standard equation, it is being subtracted, but using the C squared, it's equal to A squared plus B squared. And if we look over here, we can kind of describe this the same way when we're looking at our A value for the ellipse. Uh, the A value for the ellipse was from the center to the vertex. So if we look up here, if we go from the center to the vertex, that is going to be a distance of A, just like with the ellipse. And also if we go from the center out to the foci, Okay, so from the center to uh, the focus, that's going to be a distance of C. And here in a little bit, we'll look at what does the B value represent. And the B value is going to give us kind of a distance that we go up here. And we're actually going to make kind of a little bit of a rectangle here in the middle. And we'll see that down here. Uh, if you notice, here we have this rectangle that's being made. And the rectangle, if we notice, has our A value here from the center to the vertex. This distance is going to be A. So if we went all the way across, that means that this distance is A and A. So this whole distance would be 2A. So if we think of this as the side of 
the rectangle, the rectangle would have sides 2a, and then our b value is telling us how far this distance is. So we'd have 1b, 1b, so the distance all the way across is 2b, and that's going to give you the other sides of the rectangle. So basically we have a rectangle here where the one side uh, is 2a, and on the other we have 2b, which is representing all the way across. So we'll notice here with the asymptotes uh, for this rectangle that we formed, if we look at the corners of the rectangle, and that's one reason I wanted to point out the rectangle here, and we'll see it a little bit later in some examples, uh, we're going to have an asymptote that goes through the corners of that rectangle in the middle, and we're going to have one that goes through one direction and one goes through the other, and that's basically going to kind of tell us how wide your hyperbola is going to be. So this hyperbola is going to kind of run right along inside of the two asymptotes on each side here. Okay, so we'll notice here the hyperbola is going to come down and hit the vertex and it's going to run right along these vertical, I'm um, sorry, these uh, two asymptotes that cross through the rectangle. And for the asymptotes here, uh, we have the formulas for that. If it's horizontal, it's y equals k plus b over a times x minus h, and y equals k minus b over a times x minus h. So if you notice, we have 1 is plus and 1 is minus, and that is because we have two different lines. One has a positive slope going up, and the other one has a negative slope going down. And then we'll notice if it is vertical, uh, basically we switch the a and b so it's basically the same formula except for where this slope is b over a here we have a over b and b over a and a over b are actually representing the slope of the line and we can see that over here because if we were to take this point uh, we have the rise and the run well this distance uh, going down is B and then the run is A. So here you have the change in the Y is B, the change in the X is A. So B over A is the slope. And in this case, this one would be positive. B over A for this one would be negative. And then of course, if we had a vertical axis, then that means the parabola would be going, I'm sorry, the uh, hyperbola would open up and down. And then we would have your asymptotes like this and we would use for the vertical it would be a over b because that way we would have the slope a over b and a negative a over b. So keep in mind when we're looking at uh, the a, b, and c values they're very similar to what we did with the ellipse. Uh, the only difference here is we'll notice that when we go to calculate the c value remember it is a squared plus b squared and also in the standard form of the equation uh, for the hyperbola, it's x minus h squared over a squared minus the y minus k squared over b squared. And for the vertical, it's the same thing, except for the y value is first, so it's y minus k squared over a squared. So if the y is first minus the x minus h, it's going to be a vertical axis.